can switch on the cameras please switch on the cameras uh, just so that uh, when he joins suresh will be able to see all of you um, i want him to see as many faces as possible
Okay, um, if everyone's ready, I'm going to invite Suresh to join the call now. Um, yes, we are ready. Yeah, just give me two minutes. I'll just inform Thank you. Thank you, Akash. Thank you. A warm welcome to all of you present here. In fact, uh, we have uh, with us today, we are waiting the arrival of our chief guest and who's a bright and Indian prospect of the Indian national team. We have with us our principal ma'am, Jaipriya ma'am, and I welcome all the students and teachers and staff of uh, this sports school to this event. We'll shortly be joined by um, our chief guest for the day, Suresh Wanjum. Welcome, Suresh. Hi, thank you. A very warm welcome to all of, all of the students present here and uh, our chief guest here. A little, I think uh, the students present here need no introduction uh, for the personality that we have with us here. But I do think the faculty and the staff would benefit from uh, getting to know other player and the person that we are going to have an introduction and a conversation with. The agenda for the day would be an interaction between the students who are um, interested in sports uh, and football, especially uh, an interaction with a personality like you would enrich them in uh, understanding the kind of uh, exposure that a player gets on an international arena. So um, without much ado, I would uh, now present to you the accolades that uh, um, our player, the international player who has been recently conferred with a, a, a honor on 20th of July 2021. He was conferred an All India Federation's Emergent Players Award recently. So congratulations to you on that, uh, uh, Suresh Wangjung, on that also. So uh, you are, Thank you. Your, journey had, your journey had started with uh, Bangalore FC, much like the players that we have present here among us, uh, the young players and emergent players who look up to you as a, uh, an inspiration. And you've been uh, part of this International uh, Footballing Association and uh, for a uh, long time. Uh, and your strengths include, I think you you are, a, I'm not much of a footballer myself, as you can say, I'm a teacher here. My name is Mini Pillay. And I'm my jo ro role here is to present you to the uh, entire school. So I do understand that you have a world exposure and the entire school looks up to you as a mentor now uh, to look at uh, and to see uh, what are the strengths that you bring uh, to the team and the kind of uh, journey that you've had in the Indian and Indian Football League as well as in the international playing at the camp, the sport and the competitive level and in the international. So the much awaited moment is here with us now. So I invite the 
chief guest for the event, the bright Indian prospect footballer for the international and the senior level, uh, Suresh Wangchom. Suresh, the floor is yours. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. And even when Akash Bhai told me about this, I was so excited, you know, uh, that I'll be getting a chance to interact with a young, talented player. So I'm really looking forward, you know, to interact with them. All right, Suresh, uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. I know that all the children on this call, we have about 70 children almost. They're really, really excited to, to have the opportunity to speak to you. Um, and as I understand it, a few of them are only four or five years younger than you. So when you look back in, on your career, obviously it started when you were a lot younger, when you were 9, 10, 11, 12, playing football, uh, you know, around your hometown. You, I remember you spoke to me, uh, telling me that, you know, growing up, there was a bigger chance that you would become a badminton player because your father enjoyed badminton. And you yeah. grew up around a lot of sports, which is what the sports school is about because... They have education, but also they have, um, you know, equal emphasis on sport. It's kind of like the best environment for any sports person. Did you grow up in a setting where sport was a big part of your life? If not football, then badminton or something else. Uh, to be honest, like my family, it's all about sports. You know, there are many people who play sports in my family. Uh, so, but there was no any other player who, who were playing football. So, as you told, like, my father was a badminton player. So, when I was 9, 10 years old, my father used to take me to a badminton court and he used to tell me to play badminton. But uh, I want to tell all the kids, you know, like, uh, choose a sport, what you enjoy and what you are, what you are willing to do. Because the time my father told me to play badminton, but I was not enjoying at all. So I took up football and I convinced my father also like, see that uh, I love badminton, but I love more football. So I want to be a football player. Then my dad did not accept, but at last, you know, uh, with, my, with my uncle, everything, telling them, then finally he accept. Then I started playing football. Uh, and until and today, sometimes I feel regret, you know, because when I started playing football, I was 11 years old. And... I didn't get the opportunity to play the grassroots level. I think that was very important, you know. So, so like, uh, if you're, if many kids are there, then I will tell them uh, if they are willing, if they are willing to play sports, then start from a very early age, you know, so that they can be a better player. Obviously, looking back uh, on your life, where we're, we're all really happy, and I know that the national team is also happy that uh, you choose you chose football. But when you go back now, uh, and when you go back to your parents as a professional footballer, do you still play a lot of badminton? I, I I have seen a few videos. I know your father takes you to the badminton court. No, but yeah, to be honest, I I love badminton also, and after football, then I will choose badminton obviously because uh, I really like that game, you know, and. Uh, why I play badminton during my off season is uh, when I go back home. The bad thing is I don't have a proper football ground at home, so uh, I can't practice it regularly. So what I do is to keep my fitness in a proper way. I just go with my father to play at badminton and just to make myself uh, fit. That's great. And, and it's really important that you brought that up now. Um, for all the children watching, Suresh, who plays for the national team, who plays for, for Bengaluru FC, he does not have a, a proper facility near his house to practice football. And all of you are so lucky to have that at much a younger age. And, and I hope that obviously, Suresh, uh, do you think that the children these days, especially the children at the sports school, they have a they have a much bigger opportunity and a bigger chance of becoming professionals purely because of what they have uh, on offer. Yeah, but uh, I has, uh, but uh, Akash, by sorry to bring football again, but let me tell you, like now we have a baby league in football. Like when I started playing, there was no baby league, you know, and there was no a proper tournament for under ten, under eleven, under twelve. There was nothing. So, but if you compare now, there's a lot of tournament for under 10, under 11, or even grassroots baby league. So, they can expose themselves and they have many opportunities. But uh, I don't want to complain, you know, that uh, I didn't get this, I, 
I, I, but it's good, you know, that we are improving in sports, not only in football. So I think it's 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 really nice that even even school having having a uh, uh, sports in their school, it's it's very nice to see because when I started playing uh, football in my school, there's no sports. Yeah, I still remember there's a PT class, but you, it's not a you know purpose. So it's it's really nice that. Today, you know, like uh, these these kids, like in their school, they're having a proper sports, you know, and facility, everything. It's it's really nice to see. Now, a lot of the children here are between uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And I have a picture of you that I want to show them of you when you were 14 years old uh, <laughs> that maybe all of you can see now uh, on the screen. This is Suresh uh, in, the, in the yellow jersey. <laughs> And standing next to him is is the captain of the national football team at that point. Uh, Suresh doesn't look very happy. Also in this picture is Mr. Bajing Bhutia, the former national team captain, Robin Singh, who was a Bengaluru FC striker. And this is between uh, in in the if I'm not mistaken, this is the MUPC Cup final of 2014, yeah. where BFC played BMSC, <laughs> which is the team that Suresh played for. And he's standing there next to Sunil Chetri. And I have one more picture to show you which is from last year, where this is Suresh and Sunil Chetri together on the pitch for Bengaluru FC six years later. Suresh, I just want to talk to you about this journey from being that unassuming 14-year-old kid to becoming uh, you know, one of the most important players for Bengaluru FC. It was not easy. I know you're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years of age. You had a lot of people come into the national team setup, into the Indian Arrow setup, trying to you know, move you out of your place how important is it to give 100% every time you're on the pitch? Because I know you do that. Yeah, for, first of all, you know, because by life changes very fast, I have to say, you know, and I've never dreamed of, uh, I've never dreamed playing for BFC or for the national team in such a young age and, and with Chetribai also. But I have to say, like, uh, like, uh, I can't say it's a reward because I have not achieved what I'm thinking, you know. So I think, like, yeah, to be honest, I was I was working hard. I I don't want to praise myself, but to be honest, uh, I was working hard every day, every training session, because as you know, uh, when I joined BFC, BFC was one of the best club uh, in the country, and and in the ISL days, the they allowed five foreigner. And when I joined BFC, there were already six international players plus five foreigners. So there were no place for me. But uh, I have to thanks to my coach, Carlos Quadrat, who has given me the opportunity also. And and to my father also, you know, like he he, he was calling me every day and 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 he was giving me a lot of advice. And I was really patient, you know, just waiting for my opportunity. And I got the opportunity and I took it, I have to say, because uh uh, I got a game uh, against Odisha. Odisha. Of course, was yeah. Of course, was putting me in the starting eleven. From that onwards, uh, till today, I have to say, like I'm still in the starting eleven for BFC, and 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 I'm really happy, you know, to be part of this big club. Like every every child or every player dream is to play for the BFC, and I've got the opportunity, you know, to play with big players like Chetribai, Gubribai, Udantabai, Ashik, many players, you know. So it's it's really nice, you know, to be here and playing with them. Now, obviously, Akash, to all the children... go on, go on, yes. Yeah, if yeah, I just wanted to ask one question here, Suresh. What would be one turning point that you would have uh, had a uh, breakthrough that you might want to say that that was one turning point in my life that caused me to change my entire course in life, uh, and probably the strength that had uh, helped you from move from strength to strength in this game and in this field as a as a footballer yeah obviously it's it's really a good question you know but i have to say the turning point was joining bfc because if i was if if the plan was not working then i don't know where i will be today you know because uh, after after playing world cup then i spent 2 years with indian arrows then then the next move for me was to be in the ISL. So there was there were a lot of pressure for me. You know, I was thinking which club to join. And as a young player, I really need game time. So I was talking with my father and coaches, you know, so where should I join? Like then 
I don't know if it's the right to say like there were went one club, you know, not this United. So I, I had offer and I was I was ready to go there, you know, because like they were telling me that I will get a game time there. But my father told me, like, see, why you want to go in a comfort zone where there's no pressure, where there is no competition for you? Then then I told to my father, but see, father, if I go to BFC, I'll be in the bench and there's already six international, five foreigner. Where will I play? So my father was telling me, like, then you need to fight because in life, yeah, till today, you know, my dad used to say to me, in life, there's nothing for free. You know, you have to earn it. So then what I did was I joined BFC, but it now people will say it's a right decision. But that time it was so difficult for me to take the decision, you know. Because it, it, it's the BFC, you know, where all the best players of the country play and five foreigners and they were the best club in the country. So, uh, at the last moment, I joined BFC, but even even in my mind, you know, I was thinking, well, what, I, what I'm going to do, you know? But but once I joined, I, I do, I, I give every training uh, 100% and just not on training, you know. Uh, to be honest, what really, or what it's important is just not on the pitch. What I do off the pitch was also really important, you know, in terms of race, food, everything. That was so important. Like, if you say, if you say to any player or even any young player, go and play. They will play whole day because kids love playing. All the young kids love playing. But if they, if you tell them to eat a proper food, take a proper rest, they will be little. Uh, you know, they may some kids may follow, but some may not. So, I think even that is very important. You know, as a as a sports person. So, uh, and and uh, and and I have to say, like uh, joining BFC was a turning point for me because the pressure, you know, in the club, what do we have it's it's a lot of pressure, you know, in BFC. And now when I go, uh, like example, this time when I went for the national team, you know, the pressure was same for me, so I was able to handle it. All right, Suresh, so um, you spoke about the initial time uh, at BFC being tough. Um, obviously, I want to kind of explain that to the children. As I understand it, when you joined us in, uh, in 2019, you joined yeah. us from the Indian, Ar- Indian Arrows and you were a mainstay in the Indian Arrows team. And you came in and we all expected you to, you know, fight for your place in the first team and suddenly see you playing for the first team. But your first few appearances in the Bangalore FC shirt came for the B team which is something that might demotivate a lot of players. But you went out there, you knew the coach was watching, you gave it your 100% and you got your opportunity. How important is it for children these days to know that, you know, there are stepping stones. I spoke to uh, Eugene and Lingdo just yesterday on a call just like this. And he said that when he went for the national team for the first time, the first training session, he had to stand as a linesman, which a lot of people will find demotivating. But he fought, he, ha- he fought hard in training. He made it to the national team setup. And he played very hard. How important is it for, for young players, especially, to know that sitting on the bench only means you have to work harder? Not being in the team only means you have to work harder. Uh, see, Kunal, uh, sorry, Kunal. <laughs> see, Agas, right? to be honest, you know, every player, just let's say Ronaldo, Messi, every player starts from the bench where you get it, where you get to learn a lot from the bench only. Just like people see, like just we are sitting, on the it's not like that you know we get to learn a lot from the bench also and i want to say to the kids like uh, you should not focus on the outcome what you can't do you know i have to say just focus on yourself like no matter like like there are some kids and even me i was one of them you know coach is watching uh, when coach is watching i always give 100 percent. when coach is not watching just relaxing it's not be like that you know like you should Fight with your character only. Like, no matter who is watching, who is not watching, just give 100% like what you can do. I want to say the end when, like, uh, when, 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 when we say about discipline, like, you know, I just want, I just, I don't, I want to say them is like, discipline is not just good morning, sir, everything, you know, like when no one is watching, like when you are doing something, do correctly, you know, what, what you want to do. Just not like, if coach is there, some player give 100%. If there's no coach, like some, they relax. So I just want to say, like, whether the coach is there, when he's not there, just give 100%. And what you told, I also feel, you know, when I came for the first time uh, in BFC, like where I was playing with the B team, because 
I I represented my country in under 17 World Cup, and I play all the matches of Indian arrows in the I League. So I'm not uh, being ego, but you know, even me, I was coming with full of positive, you know, full of uh, uh, positive and full of confidence. But when coach put me in the B team, uh, but I think uh, the good part was I, I didn't take it in an easy way. I was doing what I can do, and the good thing was coaches to come every day to watch the game. And he saw me then, he picked me in the first team. Then obviously from there, there was another story. Sorry, Akasba, I can't hear you. Sorry, I want to speak to you about your first few days um, with the national team setup. Obviously, playing for India at the Under-17 World Cup. Your Twitter bio, your Instagram bio says you represented your nation at a World Cup, which is a huge deal. There were so many children who wanted to do that. And you got to do it. What was the feeling like? What was it like to be on the bus arriving at the stadium in Delhi? The crowds are just thronging the stands. India playing at a World Cup. Obviously, it's an under-17 level, but it's still a World Cup. But uh, like Akalbe, when you tell me about the World Cup till today, I get a goosebump, you know, because it's something like uh, no Indian player has played. But I have to say, like it was very difficult, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, we are lucky to get to host the tournament but but we are lucky that you know the, the 25 player they were not lucky they worked really hard to be in the team but to host the tournament we, we were lucky and every day every day was trial for us you know new player come new player go come so it was like that so every day we need to give 100 percent and and till today I, I still remember you know when we when when we played the under 17 world cup Oof, the stadium was full, like 50,000, 55,000. And, and when I was entering the stadium, uh, while I was sitting in the team bus, I saw my father, mother, you know, cheering, like waving hand. It, it, it was a really wonderful moment, you know. I, I can imagine it must have been quite emotional for you. And I also want to talk about some of the experiences you got because you reached that level. There is a picture of you uh, on the internet where you're tackling... Um, uh, for the ball with Erling Haaland, who is one of the world's best strikers at this point in time. You got to play against some of the biggest names uh, in football at the moment, and you're one of the biggest names in Indian football at the moment. What were the experiences like? Did you get a glimpse of, wow, this is the next level, I need to work hard? Sometimes you go out there, you put yourself in a game and you realize, I thought I was good, but I'm not, I need to work harder. Is that what your feeling was? Uh, first, like I wanted to thank Nikolai Adam. Because he he gave us uh, not uh, even the Sai and All India Football Federation for giving us the opportunity to go abroad and play a lot of friendly match. Because uh, when we play with Brazil, you know, I was just watching in the clock so that the game get over because uh, it the game was so fast and it was so tiring also, you know. And even Vinicius was there. Currently, he's playing for Real Madrid. And to be honest, it's it's very different, you know, the game pace, the how they pass, how the, even the physical, you know. So and and we were lucky, you know, to go out and play friendly games with them. At least, uh, at least we got to learn a lot from them also when we play with them. And it's really nice, you know, playing with them also and getting some experience from them. Now, moving to Bengaluru FC, we mentioned it briefly, but walking into a dressing room that had players like Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, like Sunil Chetri, like Dimas Delgado, Eric Patlu, it must have been, you know, uh, no matter how big you were with the under-17 team or with Indian Arrows, walking into a room with all these people, at least for the first few days, must have been slightly stressful for you. <laughs> no, and I know, that, I, I know that a lot of these children will go on to do that at some point in their lives where they walk into a team that has big players with you, you don't know what they're like. You don't know if you should even look at them. I know that you, you didn't even look some people in the eye. Uh, what was yeah. it like initially and how did it slowly become? I know that now you're best friends with all of them. Yeah, it, it was, it was really difficult, you know, for me because I could not solve my face uh, in the dressing room only. I, I used to go in the corner of the room and just sit quietly. And I used to think like uh, nobody should call me. You know, I just put my head down and I just, I just sit, down, I sit quietly in the corner. But even in the one day, you know, uh, and I could not even say 
to goodbye, chat you back, good morning, good afternoon, you know. So what happened is like one day, um, it was team meeting, you know, before a game. So uh, goodbye, bye, chat you back. Everyone was in the room. So I just walk in and, and goodbye. Bye. So I was trying to avoid them, you know, just hide my face and go uh, behind, <laughs> behind. And... And what happened was Gupi Bai was telling me, Bab, like he was telling me in Hindi, Bab, pre, bada, pre, re. Matlab, like, you know, because yeah. I'm a junior, I'm a junior Master guy. Hello? Can you hear me? Can everybody please be on mute? Yes, go on, Suresh. Yeah, then uh, Gupi Bai was saying, oh, bada, pre, re, I'm top, senior, kasa, hard, bine, milat. As I said, he was telling me, you know, then, then I, I, I feel more, I feel more bad, you know, like in my mind, I was not thinking that way, you know. To be honest, I could not solve. But uh, I went to him privately and told to Gupi Bai. The, the thing was this, like, I could not uh, solve my face. Uh, it, it's not about big player. Like, sorry for that. From next time, I will do it. And from that onwards, you know. And the good thing where Chetri Bai, Gupi Bai, that time Rahul Bai was there. Udanta, they were so nice and they really welcomed me very in a very nice way. So after just five, after a week, two weeks, then I was so comfortable, you know, with them. And uh, playing alongside foreign players like Dimas, like Eric, obviously um, they've played in different leagues. They have experience of playing at a slightly higher level than Indian football. How much did you learn from them? A lot of a lot of players, a lot of children especially, refuse to understand that you stand to gain a lot just by playing with someone. How much, did, how much did you learn from those who were around you and how did it make you a better player? Yeah, uh, for me, it was it was really good thing, you know, to be with them. Just not only Dimas, Eric, but even, I have to say, even Hugin by as a midfielder, you know, he really taught me uh, a very good things about my body position, when to receive, when not to receive, and to check the soldier, everything. But it's, it's really nice, you know, because... Uh, like as you mentioned, Dimas, Eric. Like when I have a problem with the ball, if I just pass them, they can hand, handle the pressure. So it it was nice, but at the same time also, I was I was really learning from them. You know, or, or like uh, in terms of passing, in terms of like after the training, like Eric used to call me to train for, uh, like separate diagonal ball. So it was really nice, you know, to have them beside me. Now, um, there are three things that Sunil Chetri always says when he's speaking to kids. He says, eat well, rest well, and play hard. Now, these three things that are something that you follow very religiously. And how much dedication does it take to do it? I know eating well is hard. You have to, a lot of children find it tough to stay away from your chocolates, from your junk food. Obviously, these kids have a very, uh, very important nutrition and they pay attention to it. But how important is it to even reduce that even even the, the smallest tell me about the margins that you have the other day i saw a video where somebody said if you wake up at four o'clock and start training you're over the over the years you will end up training so many more years that everybody else will be just left behind how how, how fine are the margins between success and failure like akazbhai to be honest it's very very important you know like uh, before so i spoke about this like it's just not on the pitch like giving 100% but this small small things will help you to improve better like eating then taking a proper rest then uh, about all this recovery exercise it's very very important so that you are ready for the next training it's it's disturbing man. can you hear me now yeah I can hear you I can hear you yeah so like all these are very important so that you are prepared for the next training or next session or next game, everything. So I have to say, even me, you know, sometimes uh, I get difficult to follow because as you know, I'm from Nordis, with a lot of white rice. And here at Chetribai, you know, this uh, Chetribai group by this to Also, right, you know, it's a lot of calves or so fat aiga. So... I think it's really, really important. Uh, all the kids, you know, they should focus on supplement, like uh, what they eat. And, and even Chetri Bai should tell me, like, to eat a lot of vegetables, you know, salad, then boiled vegetables, everything. And try to avoid masala, soft drink, and, you know, spicy things. And, and, and not only food, even how you take care of, of yourself, you know, 
about injuries and about recoveries and sleeping on time. I think uh, if you want to be in the top uh, top player, then I think you need to sacrifice all this, you know, like going out with your friends, uh, like eating with your friends. Like I think you have to sacrifice. So, like That's the reason, you know, why we are not same with them. So I think this is meant. How much sleep do you get every night? I want to know this because a lot of a lot of kids sleep late, wake up early because they have to train. And how important is it that you get enough sleep? For me, uh, Akasba, it depends. Like, uh, how is the training? Like here, we train in the morning. Then I try to sleep at least eight to eight thirty hours. You know, so what I do is uh, I just switch off my mobile from nine thirty. Then, like when I go to the bed, I don't sleep directly. You know. I just think something and I sleep. So what I do is I just put my mobile off from 9.30. Then maybe I sleep 9.50 or 10. I don't know, but I count it from 10. So 10, 11. So I wake up around 6.30. So I try to cover 8 to 8.30 hours in a in a day. And I take a nap around 45 minutes, 30 minutes in the afternoon. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't switch off their phones at night. They leave it on. And, uh, you know, if it rings that they wake up, how much of a difference does that, does that make? Because a lot of children nowadays at 15, 16 years old, they have their phones. They don't switch it off. So if it rings, they pick it up. Sometimes they're listening to something. When did you start it's, doing it? Did you always so, switch it off? No, you start doing it? Yeah, I have to say it's difficult for young, young, young people, you know. Because we're young, I think everybody must be having a girlfriend. I, I also do. So even my girlfriend get angry, you know. My parents understand it because they know like, I just call them around eight. Then I speak with 30 minutes with them regularly. So they understand. But sometimes but my girlfriend used to say like, oh, why you keep your mobile off? Or I didn't keep, I, I never keep my mobile off. I used to put silent mode. So I don't hear anything. So I get a peaceful sleep. So, but it, it's, it's really, it's really important because uh, maybe someone can call you and it can affect your sleep. And the thing is tomorrow morning, again, I have to fight for my place. I have to give 100%. So these small, small things really matter. Now, for somebody as disciplined as you, what is the what is the toughest thing to follow? Like I know that, like you mentioned that, uh, obviously fr you're from the Northeast, so you like your rice, but you don't eat rice. What are the other things that you find really tough? But I know you do it. I know you manage to do it. But a lot oh. of these children, they don't, they don't want to switch off their phones. They don't want to sleep by 10 o'clock. What are the things that you do, but you struggle no, to do? No, like, like, uh, to be honest, every kid will struggle, but I want to say to them, it's like, just uh, try to do it, you know, like, don't, it won't be possible in one day, but, but, but let's try to make a habit, you know, like today, uh, today, let's say, uh, let's say today, oh, let's say about sleeping. Okay, today I'll sleep seven hours. Then tomorrow, then I'll try to sleep seven hours, 30 minutes. So let's try to increase little, little, and make a habit. It's it's really important to make a habit. You can't force yourself, Akashvai, because forcing is something you are not willing to do by yourself. So I would like to say is make a habit and you should love what you are doing. Sometimes, even me, you know, uh, I want to go out with my friends. I want to eat with them. But, you know, your, every kid must be having their goal. But even me, I have a goal. But, I don't want my goal to to put it down. So, as I mentioned, sacrifice. It's it's really important, Akashvai, to become in the top player. When you look back uh, on your career so far, obviously you're a footballer. But for if you were in any sport, there are a few people that you cannot cannot uh, disobey. Like you mentioned that your parents thought you should not go to your comfort zone. Your father said, "Don't go to the northeast and play for Northeast United." Go to BFC, you know, test yourself against the best. It will make you a better player. You follow that. There are a few coaches that you always listen to. Sometimes, uh, I'm sure that even you have faced this, maybe when you were younger in your career, when your coach, regardless of what, what sport you're in, you think that maybe they're wrong. And it's not wrong to think that, but at the end of the day, you have to respect them because um, they are your coaches. What do you have to say about that? Because even myself, I wanted to be a footballer. I played a lot of football growing up, but I used to have this... Obviously, I didn't end up making it like you did, but the, I always had this feeling once in a while that maybe the coach is not oh. right, you know. Akashvai, your, your voice is breaking down. 
sorry um i was just talking about the importance of knowing uh you know how much respect you should give your coach agaz bhai suresh are you there suresh do you want to try and drop off and join back in agaz bhai can you hear me yeah yeah I can yeah yeah so no, sorry i i could not hear no problem what i meant was how important do you think is it to know that the coach knows better that that your coach regardless of what sport you're in is trying to make you a better player sometimes they might uh, make you do things that you don't like but how important is it to respect that because they know what they're doing uh first like they have the experience you know so i think that's the first thing we should respect because uh one, at the same time you know one day even we'll become a senior player and we'll say the same thing to our junior player because uh i have come up all those experience like till now like when gopi bhai or chidi bhai say something i listen them because they have come through all those things so first i think we should really you know sometimes they may give a bad decision but it's at the last it's your decision you know but i think you can uh you can listen all the decision what is given to you and you can choose it what is what is the best for you a lot of children here you know obviously stay away from their parents uh, right now because of the pandemic they are at home a lot of children uh, come to come to the sports school and they have an environment that's conducive to both education and to sport which makes it tough for them in 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 some ways when they have to stay away from their families for a while how important is it to just know the end goal like the end of the tunnel what you're fighting for what is your end result yeah. have you ever had a situation where you're going through a tough time i know that you were in the bubble with me and and you know the end of the season it is what we're waiting for we're fighting for the playoffs how important is it to focus on what you want in your career so like uh, akash bhai you are asking me about the focus of your career about focus putting your mind on one particular target in general uh it's a really tough question i don't know what to say but uh when you tell me about focus uh if you are really if you really want it then obviously uh akash bhai i don't know how to say because even me i'm getting nervous what you're asking me but what i do is uh whatever we are doing now we have a certain goal so so if i am not following everything in a correct way then i won't get the goal you know so to get that goal and and the the goal what i'm making is it's my goal you know like like my father didn't say me to do this and i'm not i'm not doing that i'm making the goal what i want so so can you hear me yeah i can hear yeah. you so so if you really want it then obviously i want to be focused and i want to get that so uh, at, the, at the what i'm trying to say is akash bhai like all the kids they should they should just uh, when they are choosing sports also i want them to choose what they like you know example i don't want them to choose like example uh, recently mirabai won the uh, medal in uh, weightlifting i i i don't want them to just choose weightlifting just i want them to choose what they really want and and what they want to become just not forcing them now suresh uh, at the sports school they have tennis basketball cricket badminton and football i want you to rate yourself out of 10 in each of these sports i know in badminton you're very good but what about the other sports i want you to rate have you played a lot of basketball or cricket basketball i'll say one <laughs> not very tall huh <laughs> then badminton i don't know i will say 8 9 okay because because what happened was when i went home i was playing single with one of the player who play at the national level you know i beat him you know so i can <laughs> say 8 9 <laughs> good good uh, and uh, obviously tennis and cricket by tennis uh, i have just played one time you know when i was uh, in goa in hotel hayat <laughs> i don't know how to hit only the ball went out man it's so difficult tennis i I'll, i'll say zero <laughs> and uh, cricket cricket i've never played with the leather ball but at home i used to play with the tennis and i was quite good i would say 4 5 are you a bowler or are you a batsman all round what all i do is if i don't bowl then i'll be the keeper okay 
All right. So we have a lot of kids listening here. I'm just going to open the floor to a few questions. Those who want to ask questions can click on the icon to raise their hand. Uh, we'll take four questions. I think Elroy uh, was there, uh, who was very, very enthusiastic to put his first question forward. Elroy, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. So, so cute. <gasps> So my first question is like, what should I for what should I do to become what should I focus on to become a professional player? Like the most professional player. Yeah, football player. Oh, you want to become a football player? It's it's, yeah. it's really nice. So like I have to say, uh, obviously work very hard, train hard, and. And try to listen to your coach, what he's trying to tell you. And make sure you do an extra training also. And most importantly, which I mentioned earlier, like eat good food, eat a lot of vegetables, stop drinking soft drink or eat spicy food, you know, eat good food. And, and obviously, you are keep, try to take at least nine hours sleep in a day. And, and just keep working hard. You know, someday you may fail, but just don't give up. Just believe yourself and don't ever, ever try to compare yourself with other players, please. Because just compare yourself what you were yesterday, you know, try to become a better day by day. That's it, what I want to say. Okay, sir. that's all I have to say, sir. Thank that's you. A good, that's a good question, Elroy. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yeah. Jay Aditya, I think you raised your hand. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. So how do we handle pressure? How do we handle pressure? Some, you and me, you know, to be honest, I'm young. <laughs> I cannot handle pressure sometimes. But what I do is uh, sometimes, to be honest, during the RSL, I was doing some meditation, you know, so that I try to be calm. Then... Then, like, see, if you want to be a, in a top player or in top uh, sports person, then there will, always, there will be always a pressure. So you need to handle it. But I don't know how will I explain it, you know. What I do is I just, because if I make mistake, I just don't give up, you know. I, I try to... Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can yeah, hear so... you. So I just don't give up because I may make mistake, but I don't try to make the same mistake. I try to learn, and next time, you know, I try to I try to do better. And then, you know, sometimes, then obviously, you know, you will. This I think will come experience. You know, when you do things, but it's it's really difficult. I don't know how to explain it, but try to be calm also. Thank okay, you. thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think there are many more who have raised their hands. Uh, based on this uh, situation, we would have to take it forward. So going on. Yes, Adna, I think you've raised your hand. We'll take two more questions. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I was asking, like, suppose you're playing a match and then you're losing really bad. How do you motivate yourself to score a goal or try to draw, draw the match? It's... It, it. Interesting, you know, but uh, friend, like, to be honest, we play 90 minutes, you know, so like every player, they should think that until the vision is blow, we should not give up what happened, what comes in our way. So it's, it's not just only me, you know, every player will have their mentality to work until the game is over. So I have to say, if the game is not over, then you have the opportunity, you can fight, you can do anything to win. So it's, it's, it's just a mentality, you know, because the game is not over. If you put yourself down, then obviously, obviously you'll be losing. So you just, you just need to fight until the game is over. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Who's there? Yeah. Ishan? Yes, ma'am. Um, like when it's off season and stuff like that, when every, all the season gets over, how do you keep yourself fit and motivated to do stuff? It's it's a really good question, and 
and I think it's very very important for all the players, you know, during what we do in the off season. But uh, first of all, like after off season, I try to spend with my family at least fifteen days or something, just not doing anything and eating whatever I want, you know, like rice with uh, beef or something, whatever I enjoy. And I try to be with my family. But after fifteen days, then I try to I try to uh, I try to make my routine and I and I start working step by step, you know, so that. Uh, whenever the club or for the national team, whenever they call me, I'll be ready. And it's it's in it's very and it's very very important, you know, what we do in the off season because there are some player who just completely rest in the off season, just enjoy, and when they come back to the club or to the national team, they come with a big belly or something. I think which is not right. I think even in the off season, it's it's really important, you know, what you are not good at, you should work in the off season, you know, so that you can improve. Like example, if your left foot is not good, then you can walk your left foot in the off season. So there's many things you know which we can do in the off season. And and I mentioned before, you know, like what I do is there's no proper ground at my home, so I try to play badminton and make myself fit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All Thank you. And all good questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do we have? Do we have? We can take one more question. I think Maya's raised her hand. Maya. Yes. Yes, sir. So my question is that how do we boost ourselves when we are tired or uh, when we are not fit in the court? How do we boost ourselves? Uh, for me, I will not. I will. I can't explain it. But for me, what I do is, I just try to show my character. You know, example in the last minute when everyone is tired. You know, even I also get tired. But I try to show my hunger and my character. That, that's it how I do. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much, Suresh. Thank you for joining us. Uh, does anybody have anything to say uh, from the sports school team? Yes. Thank you, Suresh, for all that uh, you have, you. you know, uh, come up with. I think you are our fan and we, the, we all go by the way you take it forward and these children follow your steps. Let me be very... Uh, you know, blank, blank. They all follow your steps. I have seen so many of them, you know, watching, trying to imitate what you do. And this is what uh, our students are with so much of vigor and they are motivated and they would like to take your steps ahead also. So you are an example for all of us. And this sports school coming up with a platform to balance sports and academics uh, you know, uh, we need people like this who will help our children to take sports to the next level. And yep. this is what we are trying to do from a tender age to make sure that our children do not miss on any opportunities. Thanks to the BFC team who have, you know, been helping us so much to make sure that not one platform is left, not one stone is left unturned. So it is a wonderful opportunity and the words that, uh, you know, the what you were saying today really mattered a lot because for everyone there are different types of stepping stones but then we all need to be inspired we all need to be motivated to make sure that we try to step on each one of them feel that experience relish it nourish it and take it forward so i think it was a wonderful time that we have spent with you and we would like to sincerely thank you and the entire bfc team from the team of the sports school to, uh, you know, be here at this point of time to motivate our children. Our budding athletes were eagerly waiting to have, uh, you know, a talk with you to make, to understand how you have taken it across. I think many more in the years to come will be there to make sure that, you know, we take this ahead and we come, uh, our students try to achieve what they are looking into for. So thank you so much for being here and thanks to the team of BFC. Thank you. Thank you. I think we also wish, uh, need to wish him a happy birthday. Um, oh. On 7th of August, he's, uh, <laughs> he has he celebrated be, his birthday. I'm going to be 21. Yes, <laughs> yes he soon turns wow. 21. So Good. Uh, from the entire team of TSS, we wish you a happy birthday too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today.
Happy Thank birthday. you so much for joining. Can, Thank you. Can, uh, if you can drop off, I'll just close the session by just uh, giving a couple of words to the kids. Thank you for joining us, Suresh. Have a nice day. Uh, thank, thank you, Akash. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. To all the kids, to all the kids listening, uh, obviously, thank you to Sports School for giving him the opportunity to speak as well. Um, now that Suresh is not here anymore, I want to kind of speak to you about the Suresh that you met today and the Suresh that I met two years ago. When Suresh Wangjam came to BFC, I think it was in the June of 2019. uh he was uh he was obviously one of the brightest players in the country but he couldn't put a sentence together he did not have the kind of education the opportunity that all of you have and what he has done is he has surrounded himself with people who want to grow he surrounded himself with uh, with players like gurpreet with players like sunil chetri who want him to grow as well and what what happens then is when you have people around you who have big expectations of themselves you grow as a result of it now you see him reading books reading doc- watching documentaries you know trying to gain as much knowledge as possible uh, honestly i cannot tell you how much he's improved as a person and if you compare that to how much he's improved as a player they're almost the same so which is what i hope that you take away from this the most um, for him this is an opportunity that he would not have been able to take 2 years ago because he was not confident to even speak to even put a few sentences together and it it, it makes me very happy that he's able to do that and that you know obviously you are able to give him that opportunity uh, so thank you to the sports school and i hope all of you all of you learn uh, you know even if it's a little bit from him i hope all of you um, imbibe something from this conversation and take it to your to your respective sports and to your classrooms thank you akshay i think uh, akash sorry akash <laughs> it was a wonderful uh, you know the walk through that you took us through i think uh, it was more than inspiration there were many things that we could uh, learn from there so uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, you know helping us to realize that how important it is and every day is a day of learning and every stepping stone is a, uh, you know it's not always success but we need to make it we need to try it out and we need to experiment it so thank, thank you, you thank so you much to, and thank you, thank you to, to your entire team, team. and uh, we i hope to do this again with all of you sometime sure 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 thank you so much thank you thank you so bye sir thank you sir bye ma'am thank you sir bye, bye sir ma'am. thank you ma'am thank, thank you ma'am. all thank you to the entire bye. team thank you ma'am bye ma'am thank, thank you ma'am. sir bye. thank you ma'am bye thank you ma'am. bye bye thank you ma'am thank you ma'am this school was going to open yeah who's this i'm jivishri Yes, Jeevashree from ninth. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you all.